So after Lotor like becomes soup, he's a victim. He's a victim. <laughs> Shiro made a girl boss a little too close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> recesses of my closet specifically for oh. this video i was so tempted to pull out like my shiro arm or like my keith jacket for this but i don't know where the hell they went speaking the makeup let's get it it's ordinary dreamer that's good <laughs> bing bong that's still stuck in your head oh my god it's been in my head you put it there you planted the seed yes i keep telling y'all i'm a menace to society what are we doing Kali? What, what are we doing we're having fun or something i don't know i'm just here we are gonna basically write voltron fan fiction oh my gosh i love that for us i will say nadia as interesting of an experience being part of Voltron was. I'm just glad that of everything that happened, we got something good out of it. Our beautiful friendship. Yes, our very chaotic, awfully ridiculous friendship. <laughs> just full of memes. <laughs> oh my gosh, too many to count. To give you guys some reference, Nadia came over and stay with me for like a week because we saw BTS together and I showed her around SoCal. We were supposed to film this video while she was here, but we were so busy f***ing around that we didn't get around to it. No, it's great because the entire time you're like prepping me, oh, we're gonna write a Voltron fanfic. What did we do? We wrote a BTS wetsuit beach AU freaking I can't even talk. That's how ridiculous it was. But you know what? It was great. It was brilliant. Are we going to write it? Who knows? But just know it was amazing. You know what? We could write Voltron fan fiction. Or <laughs> BTS BJU. It was so good though. Y'all, the eggs. Y'all, when we tell you the eggs, bruh. We'll make that a separate video. Just like me and my friend write BTS fan fiction together for like three hours straight. <laughs> We post it while Pippa picks up. Hey, you heard about that deal with Paramount? Yeah, we like what we see here. How you feel about a movie oh deal, bro? God. I'm not trying to get canceled the first five minutes of this video. We need to focus. Well, we should probably start we probably should. rewriting Voltron at this point. Let's get into it, bro. I had to get a whole spreadsheet out for this one. I pulled up a, 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 a WordPress blog of all things. What? I don't remember the plot. Are you kidding me? Shout out to Flynn. Flynn on owliciousblog.wordpress.com for the entire synopsis of season one to season eight. Bless your heart, dude. Are we on the same page where season one and season two were pretty much going to leave untouched? Those, yes. And I just want to point out, season two is the best season of all. Literally, they gave us so much. They ate with that season, all right? That that was their peak, which is so sad because it's early in the beginning. I do want to add, though, because you know me. I love angst. You know I love angst. That's all I give. That's all I provide. I want to add more to Alora because, like, honestly, of all the characters, she was the one that she and Hunk really didn't have much of, like, I guess character development i guess i feel like she would have had some kind of trauma just work with me here work with me if you were having a casual tuesday tuesday you know you're just having a fun time you're just having a chill day bro you're just living your life and you just happen to be i don't know royalty love your nation you love where you live like you love your culture so much and then these other group of people that like you know and we're cool all of a sudden start like killing you and your people um, and you just basically witness the genocide of your planet. And then all of a sudden you get shoved into this pod and you're like, uh, and you wake up and everything is calm. Everything's quiet. Everything is gone. Literally your, your planet's dying. You, you get shoved into a pod. Next thing you know, you're in the arms of this weird ear dude. Who's like flirting with you. It's like, what the frick is going on, man? I feel like she would just, she should have some sort of like thing to work through because that's a lot to process for an individual something she has to deal with as she's going on and it, it, that would also help the viewer to like relate to her more i could be wrong because again this is a remix i feel like we need to state that this is a remix because i've had my fair share of people say this so rude of you to see a remix. it's like we, we, we were there we were there when this stuff went down so we're qualified to say ah it's glorified fan fiction. We're not, oh my gosh. We're Do not, not cite the deep magic to me, which I was there when I it was, was there when it was written. <laughs>
Season two, the same, just that Laura has trauma. Or more visibly is dealing with like, I'm the last all Tim. You know what like Aang had to deal with his stuff as the last airbender? Yes. Maybe they're going around trying to find all these old Altaian spots in the universe and then they're abandoned and wrecked and Allura just breaks down at one of them and it's just like, I'm really the last one. And Cran's like, no, you're not, I'm still here. And then later on when they find more Altans or whatever, like it's a huge weight off her shoulders, but also it's like, God, I'm not cut out for this. Other than that, I feel like season one and season two are perfectly fine. I love them. I love them. They're really good, honestly. They're great. We're keeping them that way. Some of my favorite moments throughout the whole show were pretty much from like season one and season two. Like got that little space mall episode. You got Blade of Marmalade being introduced. Oh my gosh. I'm just like dying because <laughs> the literally season <clears throat> season two especially just had some really good <clears throat> stuff. The found family dynamics. We lost that in later seasons. That's what really got people to love about Voltron because here are these like kids who for sure three of them kind of get along but they don't really mesh well and then there's this other outcast kid and then there's this dad figure and they all just kind of work together and they work as like a family when we lost the found family we lost the heart of voltron and like why we were engaged in these kooky cast of characters in the first place yeah the first two seasons it was very condensed it was focusing on the core cast and then as time went on and they started like going their own separate ways or you had like even more characters being introduced like that got kind of distant and then suddenly like more and more is being piled on the plate and as we were losing that core family it also was like parallel with this like the show going downhill i agree by the end of the show there's so many characters like literally when i'm reading this i'm like wait who is that like they were doing too much and it showed a lot with their writing that they didn't know what they were doing which was a shame because like you could have kept this real symbol my guy you had it built up in a way where like this is where it could go because we didn't know what was going on at the time all we had was our theories and like our what ifs and blah 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 as it was going they had it where it was so simplistic, but yet so just like engaging. And then they just, I don't know what happened. None of us do. Here we are. No, literally that's exactly it. You got on the nose because the first two seasons, it was simple. They had simple objectives, simple missions, and the whole story was like formulaic, but the complexity came from the characters themselves and like their arcs and what they wanted, their motivations, interactions together. As the story went on and things got more and more complex, it was very evident that they were biting off more than they could chew. They had this whole universe of things they wanted to do and they were trying to like shove it into this container. Like I get wanting to do all these cool ideas, but it, it like takes away from like the core subject. And even then, a lot of stuff that they introduced, they didn't even cover. They didn't even like get back to that. And it's just like, where were, what was the point of you introducing that if we weren't even gonna like, hello? Like the whole alternate universe thing, they touched on that in season three, right? And like, it was, oh, like what if the Altaians like took over the universe in the name of peace? And that was a really cool concept. And it was like touched on like later, of course, with like Hagar wanting to find the universe where she could be with her family. There was so much potential for the alternate like universe stuff. And they barely did anything with it, especially with the core cast of characters. Like imagine they went to a bunch of different alternate realities and it was like Spider-Verse thing, you know? Like they met other versions of themselves or like other paladins. They didn't do it. When you try to look at season three through season eight a lot, it's just like, how did we get here? How is Huh. Season three was all right, in my opinion. It just needed a few like tweaks. That's when the whole Quran thing was introduced. Yeah, no, that's when they started bringing the short seasons and that's when it all fell apart. Six seasons in two years. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's when we got Lotor too. I really liked how they introduced Lotor. I love Lotor as a character. Oh, I'm Lotor's just... so good. He deserved it. He... We're giving him a redemption arc. That goes without saying. And if not, we're doing it because I said so. <laughs> I will say, like, seasons four through six, I barely remember what happened. I had to, like, go back and rewatch stuff, and look at synopses, because it was just so forgettable. And then season seven and eight, I remember, but for the wrong reasons, because it was freaking awful. <laughs> I just remember, like, looking at my screen during season eight, being like, what are you doing? No! I know Keith, he takes a leave of absence from the team. This is when, like, Quran or fake Shiro is in charge again. And then he comes back to the group. That's I don't know if this is when like after season. Hagar takes control of Shiro. Yeah, that was always kind of weird. Like Hagar wanted that in with Shiro to like control Voltron or something. Like was that ever really explained? Because at the time he wasn't like a part of the Black Lion. Like he hadn't had that connection. So like- I think the Galvar just have some weird kinks, you know? <laughs> I guess I'll just keep going with Keith because he was my favorite. That was the love of my life. 
we we have broken up unfortunately but it was fine it was mutual he had the obviously the most interesting arc the writers put a lot of effort into him which is like all right sure but it, it was still would have been nice to see them put more like that same effort in other characters like hunk i still keep him as that he joins the blade of marmora the blade of marmalade because at this point keith has always been struggling with like finding his place and not measuring up he's always kind of like always felt outcasted even though he was always the best pilot i wanted to keep it where like he still joins the blade of marmora in the second season very good oh yeah i really didn't like the whole time jump thing when he like found his mom let's I, be real I that was like just an that excuse just... to shut down clans that's all that was <laughs> And the only thing that that brought was the Altaian company that was hidden away, that they realized Lotor has been using us for his experiments. It was to expose Lotor. No, that whole thing needs to just be redone. Oh, uh, I, I liked Krolia, and it was cool that he was able to find his mom, especially since, like, he wanted, like a family or whatever. Oh my gosh, parallels with him and Lotor, what? The core thing is they're all searching for something. They're all searching for belonging because they just don't feel that, I guess, when they're in their garrison or they're out in space. They're all looking for like a place to call home. And that place is with your friends and family. Maybe she wants nothing to do with Keith. She's like, I left you for a reason. Oh, that's angsty. That is I so know, angsty. that's all I have to offer for you. Oh my God. I uh... should be even more painful to him because it's like, well, what do I do now? But then that forces him to realize about himself that like you have just been so terrified from letting yourself live to let people in because you're so scared that they're gonna leave you but they're not you have this great group of friends a great family that loves you there maybe they're not related to you who freaking cares they still love you bruh ah what if like Crolia was like an ambassador for blade of memora on voltron or maybe like she's like the operative that keith works with like the most and so we see a bunch of her that makes the build up to like her being his mom that much more impactful and maybe she knew the whole time that that was her kid but she just didn't say anything oh, she knew she definitely knew. like oh i'm gonna say jack Drop. yeah like he wants to work with the blade and crowley is like hey i'm gonna be like kind of the in between between you like voltron like aka you mm. and the blade and they bond and stuff and he's seeing all the stuff the blade is doing and maybe he helps out when he can but it's like I, that's where I want to be. Like, that's where my mother was. Like, because my mother yeah. is like biting her tongue. Wait, so I love that. Done. I love that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, it makes it even worse when, like, he finds out. It's like that one pan in from the Guardians of the Galaxy 2. He's just like, oh, I loved your mother. Too bad I put that tube in her head. And he's like, yeah, like what? <laughs> I just would like it if he comes into like himself working through with the Blade of Marmor or whatever, and then eventually comes back to Voltron but he doesn't come back as the leader. He comes back as the second in command because he never wanted to be the leader. He never wanted to be in charge. That was always Shiro's dream. Cause like, yeah, Shiro saw something great in him and he prepped him to be a leader with have leaderistic qualities. I still would like him to be put in that leader position like after yeah. Shiro vanishes because they kind of just assume what it is. But like he, at that point realizes he doesn't want to be a leader. So then when the fake Shiro comes back, he leaves because he can like be in charge again and it'll all go back the way it was. I feel like that's when he can have the little Blade of Memora thing. And then we found out, oh, sure, was fake. And it's like, oh, what do we do? But then it's like, if Keith's not going to be leader, who's going to be there? Lance. Lance is going to be the leader of all time. Oh, like when we first meet Lance, or like, I guess when Lance first sees Shiro, he's just like, whoa, that guy's <clears throat> my hero. Hello? If you met your hero, I don't know about you, but like, I would never leave him alone. He looked up to Shiro since the beginning and he was training to be a freaking pilot. And like, he had freaking imaginary beef with Keith because he was like the gifted prodigy, like pilot. And I feel like that would have been good character growth for him to kind of grow up and to be put in this leader position. We actually see that through the show where like Lance, he takes charge and like, he doesn't back down and like, sure, maybe he's afraid, but he still like does what needs to be done. He matures, but it would have been great to like see him be more like to be a pilot, like at the end of the show, like to be working in with the garrison or like to just be an explorer because that was his dream. Alora stay the blue lion and Keith become like his right hand man because that's essentially what Keith was to Shiro was his right hand man. And I feel like Keith would have much preferred that. It would have been good for their dynamic too because like you said at the beginning, he had imaginary beef with Keith. Like literally when you watch the show, Keith doesn't want to be there. Keith is just there because he got roped into saving his dad. 
But now he has to deal with all this stuff. And now here's this random dude that he doesn't even know. That it's just like, hey, I hate you. You're my rival. Like, I'm sorry. What is your name again? Like, I don't know you. Because obviously they get over whatever the frick was going on. Lance gets over his jealousy and Keith, like, calms down. It would have been really good for, like, them to, like, bond. Have another little bonding moment, if you will. And Keith be his real right-hand man. And then that would have been really great for, uh, like, their friendship. And maybe even more. I don't, oh, wait, hold on. Which should have been. He would have looked so good in black. It has a lot of qualities that Shiro has. Shiro is very compassionate. Shiro is very empathetic and like will sit down and listen and talk to you. And like Lance, <clears throat> he he does kind of get insecure, but he's a kid. He's a kid. He's in space. He doesn't know what he's doing. But like when he gets serious, he gets serious. Like he ah! almost died that one time and it was never addressed again. Literally. So many things. Literally, what what's Vol if you could describe Voltron in one statement, what would you say? Never address it. It never, we never talked about it. It never happened. What do you mean? You're lying. Just get gaslight gatekeep girl boss. That's Voltron. Suddenly I can't read. <laughs> Lance had so much going for him as a character. And so for him to just be put into this, like all the other characters had like these promising like futures and going out and doing things that they wanted to do when they were younger. And then here's Lance, like what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It just doesn't narratively fit very well, but you know, it could work. If you played Farmville 3, you could be the farmer of your own narrative story. This video is brought to you by Farmville 3, baby! Farmville 3? Farmville 3 is an animal simulator game where you can start up your own unique animal farm and enjoy life at a different pace. It's a colorful new world with limitless possibilities for creating the farm of your dreams. Breed animals to raise, which is my personal favorite part of gameplay, since each animal type will give you a different farm good to sell, even special rare goods. And plus, they're super cute. Hire farm hands to help your township progress from gourmet chefs to rough and tough lumberjacks that you can level up to unlock new skills and recipes, harvest bountiful crops, and reap the rewards. There's so much to explore with customizing your farm, and that's not even mentioning the countless decorating options. Join a co-op game to farm together and complete special events to unlock new farm animals and items. And did I mention the cute animals already? Just look at them. If you're interested in starting up your own farm life, Lance style, check out my link in the description and download Farmville 3 today. Eat away from the world of intergalactic space wars and magical reality shifting robots and immerse yourself in the world of Farmville 3. Available on both Android and iOS, mobile and tablet devices, and you can download the game from the App Store or Google Play Store. I had some maybe hot takes, but I want your opinion on them. So Shiro should stay dead. They should really hammer down at the beginning of season three that they were looking for him. Like a montage even of like them like visiting places they've been or planets or whatever. Cause all we see is like, oh, we can't find Shiro. Time to step up. So I really want it to be like, okay, where the f is he? We are trying to find him. We want to keep searching, but we searched all these places already. Like as you see, and we need to do something about Voltron. I think they all would be like freaking out, like, cause they were very concerned when they ran to the Black Lion, but like from that point, it's only Keith looking. And I don't, we don't know how long it's been. Just have them around a freaking circle and like, they're all depressed looking like we've looked everywhere, but we can't find him. Just make it more sympathetic. Here's the thing, if you didn't want him to stay dead, join up with the Rebels and Matt, because he feels very much like an extra wheel. And so he leaves after realizing maybe like Voltron's grown up, They've changed without him. Time has passed by and they don't need him anymore, but they can always find him if necessary. Either have him stay dead and don't bring him back for that god awful, like, oh, you put his soul in the clone's body and yippee. Or like maybe they have like leads and they eventually find him like they found Matt. Now, is this Shiro Shiro or is this fake Shiro? Are we Shiro, keeping Shiro. the fake Shiro or no? I only ask that we keep it so we can get that sick fight scene with Keith and Shiro. That was so yes. good. Yes. Yes. yes, we have to keep that. We have I it was so that good. look in Keith's face. Oh my gosh, it kills me every time. Like you walk in and you see all like the Shiro's in the test tubes and he's like, hello, Keith. That's the only good thing that came out of that season. The only the good thing that came out of the later seasons, bro. That was amazing. That was beautiful. That's the only thing which I you'd have to keep with the fake Shiro. But I feel like after the fake Shiro, Shiro's just dead. Shiro's been dead the whole time. And I feel like it makes it <clears> even <throat> worse 
Because you know me, I'm a sucker for angst. It's a good thing you mentioned that because like after Shiro comes back in like the, the actual show, there is an absolute difference in like the characterization of Shiro. And he was really demanding to get into Voltron to become the Black Lion, which you could say is a part of his programming. But again, they didn't know that he was going to be the Black Lion's paladin, but whatever, that's reading too much into it. Wait, I had a really, really good idea hit me. The spirit of Wapat has possessed me. <laughs> Be gone, Paramount Pictures, be gone. You know how there was like a scene where fake Shiro, I'm just gonna call him Karan, goes to the Black Lion and there's a pause and then the line like lights up. What if the Black Lion refuses Karan because he's a freaking clone? It's like, oh no, you're not touching my Voltron because Shiro's spirit is for whatever reason still in there. Like the Black Lion's like, oh, I know you're, you're sus. You're an imposter. So they're all like, oh, maybe it's because Keith is actually meant to be the Black Paladin now. And like they've bonded for whatever reason, not knowing that it's Karan, of course. So Karan is like, okay, I guess I'll stick to the sidelines or whatever. But he's secretly like, sabotaging stuff on the side, you know? And they don't, they don't, yeah. But the audience is like, wait, why isn't the Black Lion and Shiro? That's Chiro true. That's true. Mm -hmm. That would be like, and like, it would be even more like if the characters themselves said it. Like if Alora's just like, oh, well, it must be because the Black Lion's blah, 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 or something like, like that. Like Keith now. Know. Yeah. Yeah, Keith's the main character, guy. I mean, of course he is. He looks like that. What do you mean? Are you kidding me? And so Keith, who maybe was feeling the pressure, is not like, I'm stuck as the freaking black paladin. So like, remember like when Quran came and like pelted the black lion, they had like an extra paladin essentially. And so Keith went and f***ed off with the blade of Memora. And then they were like, oh, you're a part of Voltron too. So you gotta be with us. And Keith was like, oh, what do I do? Voltron or blade Memora? Have it so like when Quran can't pilot the black lion because the black lion's like, no, like you're not touching me, yeet. And then like Shiro, like <laughs> Shiro's like, nope, nope. You're not coming near my pallet, my nope, lion. Not happening. So Keith is like, he still has to pilot the like black lion, I guess. But, but wouldn't that like put more to his disdain for like being in that position of leadership? Exactly. And like he, like whenever he goes off with the blade, he's like, oh, I like this and I'm learning more about myself, but I have to go back to Voltron because they need me. That way it's not, we don't lose Keith for a bunch of episodes, you know? Because remember, he wasn't in like a like a whole like he was gone for like a like a, I think a whole season actually. He was like gone. Oh, oh my god, I thought it was a really amazing scene. Sorry, sorry, just, just pouring into my brain. So there's an epic fight, right? Where Karan like has turned on the team and they're fighting, and Keith is like f***ing off somewhere with the blade of Mamory, and he can't get to <laughs> the Black Lion in time to form Voltron, and so like. What do we do? What do we do? And then Lance is like, they're fighting in the black line or something. And then Lance is like touching it and all of a sudden it lights up. And then <laughs> Wait, you're mine. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, bro. That would be perfect though. I'm like, <laughs> the feedback. <laughs> that would be perfect though because he's already the black line. And then he comes back. Who's piloting the red line though? Frank. <laughs> right at that moment, like Lance is like, wait, I'm the black pal. And Keith bursts in with the blade of memory and they're like, all right, I'm here. Where's the black line? Lance lit it up and then he's like, Lance. And like, that's like like the respect, you know? And he goes yes, to the red yes, line. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my freaking God, yes. Yes. And then it cuts that sick fight scene with Keith and Karan. <laughs> Yo, literally though, literally, literally, literally. I can just see it now, the, the, like the look between Keith and Lance. Oh my gosh, that's brilliant. It's perfect because if like, let's say like they're fighting and then like, you know, Karan manages to corner Lance and we get to see Lance use that like a tan broadsword that he like, it just showed him having it and they never got to freaking use it really. But then they're fighting. Lance is like, I won't let you hurt my team. And Karan's like, get out of the way, Lance. And he touches the thing and goes like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yes. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Ah, it's amazing. I love that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Why didn't they do that? I would have lost my mind. And it's great because it keeps on cutting to like Keith, like on the ship of the blade, and we're like, I'm coming, I'm coming. Wait for me, wait for me. And then they're like, We need you now. He's attacking. Like he's gonna get into the black line. I'm like, F up. Lance is holding him off. It's like I'm almost there. Like keep holding on. And then yes, it keeps like cutting between that scene and then ah, oh, yes. Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely, yes. That's going in the plot. That is the plot, that is actually the plot. Like I'm just picturing a moment where like, they're fighting in the black lion, right? Karan and Lance. And then Lance briefly touches the lion, but it doesn't light up yet, but he like looks at the concept of Shiro and you hear like Shiro's voice like coming from it. 
Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my gosh. It's giving the force. I love it. <laughs> no, it's perfect because that way we get to see freaking Lance and Shiro interact more. Both Shiro and fake Shiro because we didn't get to see like a whole, whole lot of that. Because he and Karan didn't get to talk all that much. But it's interesting because maybe like if we had more moments of Lance and Shiro before Shiro disappeared, and then Lance and Karan, and then Lance slowly starts noticing like those differences. Like, wait, he's a lot more aggressive and like prone to like recklessness. What is this? Like, this isn't like really Shiro. And maybe like while this is happening, we as the viewer get to see Lance like being put in more situations where he has to step up to the plate and be a leader. So that yeah. way when he becomes the Black Paladin, we're not like, what? We're like, oh, yes, because like, it makes yeah. sense. Oh, imagine this awful moment where like, Lance is like piloting the black lion and all of a sudden like all their subconsciousness like are in that like rainbow like magic field like the astral plane yeah. and they see Chiro and that's where they see him for the last time they have to say goodbye to him there oh my god yes <laughs> that is so tragic I love it yes maybe like he goes like one by one and then and he puts his hands both his hands on like one on Lance and one on Keith is like the future of Voltron is with you guys. And yes! Like, so, oh, that works! That works! That works! We might need another season of Shiro. Because I know at the end of season two, he disappears. I feel like we might need three seasons with our Shiro, our space dad. And then like at the end of that one, he disappears. Because like there honestly was not enough time, I feel like, for him to bond with all of the kids. Because like, oh no, he bonds with Pidge obviously earlier in the show. He kind of bonds with Honk every now and then, but he obviously has an established relationship already with Keith. But he he kind of bonds with Alora every now and then. I feel like it would have been good for like more moments with Shira and Lance. Because now that you mention it, there's not a lot of moments that they have together. And it really been good for Lance himself, especially if like Shiro, as he's like bonding with Lance, he sees that he has that same greatness that he sees in Keith. So I feel like maybe if there's another season, Voltron trying to figure out how to stop the, like the Galra. Just and in slice of life and like more little adventures to really, again, cement that found family thing that everyone loves so much. Cause it, and I know in season two, they tried to bring it, they brought in the quintessence amulet, which I honestly, I will get into that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The villains shift so much that it's hard to feel really attached to any of them and like really get what's happening. And Hagar, she's like the puppet master from the shadows, right? But it's just like crumbs sprinkled out. If they were able to flesh out more and be like, okay, look what Hagar's doing. Look at all her evil plans. She's actually like a big baddie you don't want to forget. Like if they were able to do more with her in the background, that could be like more elaborated on in seasons like two and then like the new three. And that way when the whole Quran debacle happens and like Zarkon's out of commission, that's like, okay, it's not like out of nowhere, you know, like she's been built up and she's a serious threat. Yeah, no, that definitely, because like that was a big thing. Cause I think the first season Sendak was the big baddie and then Zarkon came into play, but then he got comatose and then Lotor's here, Zarkon's back, but then Lotor's back-ish, but then Hagar's back and remembers her past, Lotar's dead, and then Hagar is like the bad guy. Like it was- And then send the place. Yeah, literally, what was that? Like, we don't care about him. He was, no, please, I don't, I didn't ask for that. Please, I would like to return this. Return this expired Furby to its resting place. <laughs> Sendak was the big baddie for season seven, but that was so f***ed up because Hagar wasn't even in season seven. It's underwhelming. He doesn't have a stage, like that same stage presence as Lotor or Zarkon or even have He was good for like the earlier seasons, but at this point yeah. we have all these other big players in the game. We don't need him. Like Lotor's generals kind of felt like they didn't have a lot to do a lot of the time. They kind of like waffled around a bit and like, oh, whose side are we actually on? Okay, are we are we keeping the whole thing with Hagar not knowing that she's a Nerva? It would be cool to just have her know and not care. Yeah, and it'd be easier to work with too. <laughs> Yeah, because the whole like personality shift is kind of like, eh, I don't know if I like this. Because like even when she was Nerva, she was got corrupted by the quintessence. She's like, I need more quintessence. We need quintessence. Quintessence. Um, the freaking. Did you see Shang Shang Chi? Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like that with like the demon. The thing. dad. Yeah. 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 With the dad and the demon, where like she's being like called to by this like dark entity, and that ends up like destroying her, and like, oh no, we gotta defeat this thing from the freaking dark souls or whatever. I feel like maybe in season three is we can establish more that maybe there's more to Hagar than meets the eye. 
Hi. Mm. And maybe, because she's been the puppeteer for like Sarkon, right? Maybe she's like, oh, bring in Lotor because she thinks, oh, I'll just puppeteer this man. But Lotor was like, but no. <laughs> yeah, season four, maybe we get like more little clips of her somehow seeing into Voltron and it's like, she's like, yes, everything's going according to plan, but we don't know how she's doing it or like what she's doing, but she's doing yeah. something nefarious. Right, yeah, no, because then that would establish her as like, the villain like we thought it was Zarkon but no it's Hagar slash Anerva yeah and so we as the audience know that she's like the baddie but yeah. Voltron still thinks it's Zarkon they have like really yeah yeah, yeah 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 oh my gosh they know that's... of Hagar but they don't know just what threat she poses yeah she knows that there's like that's their space witch but they don't know anything else are we still having Zarkon comatose by season four Harvey wanted to keep him comatose but another premise like no he has to wake up because then Lotor has to be like go on the run and there's like Zarkon versus Lotor on top of like the all the other conflicts right now literally like not too close to the beginning but like not entirely also these episodes are 40 minute long episodes so <laughs> freaking there you go literally we can get a lot more done in 40 minutes than 22. i think maybe that would work because then it, it would pace more of like lotor and his reservations towards the galra and like um team voltron and then um when him not in charge Hagar is gonna want him out of the picture because he's someone that she can't manipulate so she's gonna pull the strings to like you know whatever with zarkon and whatnot to get rid of him and then like lotor's just kind of save his own skin because he eventually has to betray team voltron right and the way that he does it is that he lied to them and he was still like mining and digging for quintessence and killing and exploiting the altan so like we still need a way for him to like betray yeah. it's funny because lotor is right in the middle of his plans but then Zarkon comes up and it's like, oh, ding dong, goodbye, son. It mirrors the spot in the actual season. Like the whole flow just kind of shifted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're right. Right, 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 right. Oh my gosh, yes. Big yeah. brain, oh my gosh. Let's just see it. That's cool. So then like, yeah, the first half of the season is like Lotor is like planning <laughs> but then Zarkon makes up right in the middle and it's like, well, crap, now our whole course has to shift. Yeah. And hmm, Voltron? Should I team up with Voltron? Yeah, like scam the team? <laughs> Manipulate? You said, guess like girl keep gay boss? That's not correct. <laughs> you know what? I thought it would be cool because I will always be an active for Galore because she deserved better. But yes. my thinking is because um, she comes to realize that her enemy is not the Galra necessarily, but Zarkon because he's the one who implemented like destruction on her people, killed her father. She might want to have this sense of vengeance, right? Where she wants to get payback to, uh, like Zarkon. She, maybe she gets like an opportunity to like actually like defeat Zarkon, but she chokes and in such nearly dies, but then Lotor comes in and like freaking. I know people would be like, oh, she's not damsel in distress. Like why? But like, I don't see it as that. She's been through a lot. It's a lot. It takes a lot to kill a person, bro. Off the bat, it sets them off as very different people where she can't, she's good at heart, but he's the one who's gonna like be able to like do what needs to be done. Yes. Oh. Wait. <laughs> I think we don't need that. <laughs> I get into the quintessence part because, oh my God. Oh, that oh, that made me so mad because I had, I am still convicted to this day because there's a point when there's that rift and they're like trying to channel it or whatever. And this dark entity comes out of nowhere, right? Like literally what the frick was that? I remember seeing that for the first time and I was convinced that that would have been the big baddie at the end of the show because like is that the negative aspect of the quintessence that like corrupts your mind because if you remember voltron itself is made out of a quintessence infused ore and voltron yeah. is a being of good so is that the pure aspect of quintessence and then is there like a darker aspect of it like that was always so confusing because like Quintessence itself extracted, like, killed things. It killed planets. Like, it was, like, at the heart of core of planets or whatever that the Galra was using. On the other side, Quintessence had, like, healing abilities and, like, had, uh, I guess, amplification enhancers. Like I said, I always assumed that that big dark entity was going to be the final boss instead of that weird Hagar thing because, like, she got her memory and she's like, I'm going to go be a Nerva again, even though, like, I, they're all dead because I killed them. But I just, the Quintessence thing, I feel like it's a one of the big reasons why the plot kind of just fell short because it's like they didn't know what they were doing because that was a big driving like 
that was the, the reason why everything happened was because of the quintessence, but they didn't explain what the quintessence was. What did they do? Why, why did they want it? They just want it like, because it messed with magic their head. space juice. Literally when they're having that fight with Lotor in the, the rift, Alora's like, we have to get out of here. This is messing with your minds. It's corrupting you because it had already corrupted Lotor, um, which I'll get into later. The magic system itself needs to be explained better and needs to be more cohesive. Pulled all this like science and magic stuff like out of their ass. We're like, okay, this is it. And like, remember that scene where Paige is like, they, she goes to Alcarion and then she's like, oh no, everything's destroyed. But wait, I touched the ground and I can see what happened. I see everything. How the f does that work? Because Voltron only existed because of this whole quintessence thing, because of this whole Rift thing. Like it would have come, it would have been full circle. It would have been full circle if Voltron would have been the thing to close this and this whole quintessence issue, because that's where it began. We should have been in that writer's room. Oh my gosh. Don't even get me started on the Altan alchemy. Bro, oh, they did Alora so dirty. I was so mad. <laughs> Alora's my gal, okay? I love her. She was great. I was always so upset when they brought in her whole magic thing and never explained it. Never like delve more upon it. And she was always just chill with it. Like, girl, if you, I woke up with magic powers, I would be questioning my entire reality. What do you mean? Hello? She just, I don't even remember the fight scene, but I think she was fighting Hagar. She just got Altaian pow magic powers and she knew how to use them. Like, hello, what? If they want to go that route, because that's clearly what they want to do, because that's like a big factor about the rest of the show is that she has magic powers. It would have been good if she was also confused as to why this was happening, because she's never had this before. It also would have been good at this point if they had like mentioned Orian. Lotor was obsessed with that place. Still don't know why they went to that place because nothing happened when they went to that freaking place. Like Alora just bonding with her freaking animal fursona. I don't, it, I don't know. That would have been a good way to like sprinkle in that little thing when Lotor like just like, hey, Alora, you want to go to this magical land that I found? Ah, like, okay, first date, I guess, freaking. They needed to explain more of that because that didn't make any sense at all. And I'm just like, you need to explain that, but you can't just drop that and expect me to accept it because no. I feel like a lot of people didn't like Allura or were annoyed by her because of the fact that like everything came so easy and just like, oh, whenever there's like an inconvenience or like a big fight happens, they don't know. Suddenly she pulls some magic alchemy spiritual thing out of her ass and then everything's okay. And like, everything's fine. She didn't know how to use it or anything, but like, you know, it's okay. Like they, they needed to show her like training with it, not being like, oh, selling out powers. Okay, bye bye. Like, cause that's why so many people think she's a Mary Sue. That is literally the most Wattpad thing, fan fiction, early fan fiction thing you could think of. Like that ish would not fly on AO3, but that is everywhere you see on Wattpad. It sucks because I feel like for me specifically, there's not a lot of like dark skinned female characters like in animation, but there's more like these days now, like, like especially with Arcane that came out. But like, it's always really nice to see um, a black dark skinned woman or just a black woman that's a main character and it would be really nice to see them be like fleshed out and like have depth and blah -de -de blah blah because representation matters no i totally agree that like i get why people didn't like her because of that and that sucks that the writers could not it's just awful. sit down and yeah. think like it's not that difficult i thought of this on like a freaking tuesday afternoon it's thursday i like she had so much going for her and she was a freaking like space magical girl. She was the last of her kind. She is royalty. She is like the last connection, I guess, to Voltron. Family ties to the antagonist. Like there's a lot you can work with there. Oh my gosh. That episode where her like dad like took over the ship like as an evil algorithm and she had to freaking, that broke me. That was yeah. such a good like look yeah. into what she could have been. Oh yeah, and then they killed her. <laughs> ah, don't get me started on that. There was no reason for it. There was no reason. Voltron was right there. It would have made so much more sense if Voltron, the entire robot beast, and it was made of the freaking quintessence. It was space made of the freaking quintessence. 
Alora was one person, and we don't even know how powerful she was because she didn't even know. They didn't tell us. They're like, oh, she's the ultimate being. It's freaking shout out the hedgehog. What's good? It's literally, talk no jitsu with Tenerva. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst thing. I literally hated that of all the things that happened out of season eight. I literally blocked that out of my memory. It did not happen. Like, mm mm. No, I that was awful. Voltron's getting rid of like Lotor and Allura, which they've been through so much <laughs> and they've like are working through so much and they have so much on their shoulders and they freaking kill them. Yeah, it, it's honestly a cop out. With Lotor, um, we need him to not kill Zarkon in the second episode of ep season five. At the end of the season, that's the last frame. It's like, <gasps> what? Yeah. No! Yeah, that's that was the worst. I hated that. That was such a letdown. I was like, literally, you're gonna, this is our antagonist and he's dead in like two episodes in. Are you freaking kidding me, dog? I don't know if you saw like the newer movies for Star Wars. Like they kill Snoke off in episode eight. He was supposed to be the big baddie, but then episode nine is like, oh, somehow Palpatine has returned. And Palpatine in this case is freaking Hagar. Oh it's like, God, okay. That was awful. That was the worst movie. I hated that movie. That was terrible. <laughs> Wait till the end of season five or have like Zarkon comatose longer because Zarkon is just a plot device that forces Lotor and Voltron to form an alliance essentially. Because when Lotor defeats Zarkon is how, when Voltron decides to trust him because at that point they had all decided that Zarkon is the big baddie and they need to defeat like he's the reason why everything's like this. But he wasn't necessarily like it hurts. Like you said, with Hagar being the puppeteer, who's being possessed by the evil space demons. It's all making sense, people. I don't know. Some, I feel like there needs to be more to the Lotar plot and especially leading up to that fight scene. Like, I don't know if maybe like the, the Voltron team, the squad with the rebels, the Voltron coalition or whatever they were calling it. Maybe they try to make a plan to kind of destroy all of like the quintessence that they have and like poison it. Cause maybe a lore and learn like a space magic spell Ooh, to like, ruin it or something or to like send it back to where it came from i don't know and during this mission it goes wrong and then there's that fight scene with zarkon and lotor pulls up and there's the fruit and then at the end it's because then it's like building up to something i don't know but you I, there's definitely got to be more with lotor just in charge as the gara trying to weave his way into the voltron squad's life getting up to that point at the end of the season when he defeats Zarkon and then we now have this what's going on what do we do you know what I mean oh I'm being okay I'm getting I'm getting another thing so like maybe after Allura and Lotor have their falling out or whatever and his whole redemption thing if they don't if we don't want like a Lotor end game no. like have Lotor be traveling the universe with his uh, generals making amends or like exploring like Altean Alchemy like he wanted to because he was super into Altean Alchemy. He knows he did like a ton of like bad things. That would work because like um, his his general, also he doesn't kill that one general. We don't, what the frick, we don't do that. No, but I like that idea based because it does imply that he gets a redemption arc because he does, he does. They don't leave him to die in that quintessence field. They take him out, they give him some therapy. And also fun fact, I feel like it would be kind of, I don't even know if this would work, but I feel like maybe um, he develops a friendship with Hunk because Hunk has always been kind of the most like the easygoing, compassionate one, like the easiest one to talk to. I feel like maybe after they like save him or whatever from the thing, no one can trust him obviously because he betrayed them, but like maybe Hunk is the one to take that first step to help him to healing and like in such yeah. by proxy, Pidge becomes friends. And so I'm like, they're all kind of like geeking out because they're all they're all a bunch of nerds. Everyone in Voltron is a bunch, is a freaking nerd. They're all freaking nerds, bro. You know, like Hunk's the first one to give him like a really big chance. And Lotor's like, I don't deserve this. Like I've killed a lot of people. Like I did it for the greater good or whatever, but like I still did these things. And Hunk's like, well, I mean, we've taken out like Galra ships with lots of people in them. And like, we've done things in the name of good. And at the end, even though like maybe they're not like buddy, buddy or whatever, he's not like a, like a full on like good guy, but he's like, you know, he, ha he has his redemption and he's doing his own thing. Because a yeah. lot of like the reason why Lotar was the way that he was is because he was corrupted by the quintessence was like what they were saying. And his because... upbringing. Like they yeah, made super literally. sympathetic he... in season eight. <sighs> literally. And he's doing he... with it. Yeah, he went through a lot because like, his mother would not look at him when he was born. His dad wanted nothing to do with him. So like he had no love from his parents. So he was just craving some sort of like family which maybe like this is why he hates Team Voltron because they have that? I don't know. Stop! <laughs> Stop! Oh my God! <laughs> we wanted 
it with his generals. He finds it with his generals. He does. He does. He do Maybe he doesn't realize that he actually had a family the entire time with his generals because maybe they were all out. Bro, you guys. Like, Luthor helps them out against, like, his mother at the very end. And they're like, join us and help make the universe a better place for, like, the Galra and all that. He's like, no, my place has never been with the Galra. And I still have a lot to think about and to make amends for. Yeah. I will let you know like when I'm ready, but for now, me and my generals are gonna go and try to make our own way and our own amends. And then, yeah, like they're just they're doing stuff like far out space or whatever. That would work too, because Lotar literally specifically states that like, he always is trying to learn more about his Altaian heritage because mm -hmm. he feels outcasted by the girl. Cause I think, I think if I might be wrong, but I think the Galra point out a lot that he's a half breed, which is so weird to say. Um, Mixed race problem. Hey, that's good. <laughs> it's just you, me, and him just having like a freaking therapy session on like yeah. being interracial. <laughs> I know you this part of myself, but I feel like I don't belong here. You and me both, oh, buddy. so true, bestie. <laughs> Honestly, say. Hunk is always, he was a brilliant kid. Like he was very smart with it, but like he, he it was never like his goal to be a pilot or- Cause he was an engineer. Yeah, he was an engineer yeah. and like- he, that, Making he, things. He could have other passions and like cooking and food was his passion because I don't know, when you're like eating with like people, it, good food with good people, like that brings a sort of closeness and family and warmth. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm just more upset that like we didn't get much with Hunk. So there was never any room for like anything else that could have like occurred from him. Or like he maybe had like a really happy home life or whatever, but he is struggling to find that sort of happiness. And like he wants to bring that like happiness to the found family. So he's like that like sweet, sort of older brother figure, you know, that like brings comfort to the rest of Team Voltron. We need to give him, well, if anything, he needs more screen time. Cause I mean, I feel like not every character, and that's what the one thing I could appreciate, like not every character needs to go through something super heavy like Keith. Oh no. Hunk, um, he kind of overcame his cowardness a bit, became a little bit more braver. And if anything, like we can see him continuously like getting over his fears and stuff, but yeah. definitely like, have more episodes where he's like the focal character where like they need to rely on him more and like he needs to Just more know. screen time you don't have to have a whole dramatic traumatic arc or like maybe like that, just him more and Laura are like the diplomats of the group because that would be perfect that would be That's perfect so and that gives more like bonding time for them and like whenever they go out to meet other like planets and people it's usually her hunk who's like an advocate for voltron and then Karan, who's just there as like a third party, you know what I mean? Oh, you know what we should do with Paige? I feel like we should prolong, like lengthen at least her finding her brother. Cause I really did like that. I liked how that went down because I cried at that scene when she thought her brother was dead. Like I sobbed, but when they did that, they didn't do anything else with her. She was just the tech guy, our homie that we go to when we need something hacked, which is like, sure, but maybe do something more. Her arc concluded pretty early. And I get if they wanted to space out the other Paladin's arcs and have them complete at different times, then sure. But either give her something to do or put it later because she does kind of feel like, oh, she's just the tech person now, like indefinitely. Make it interesting. Make it makes it interesting. Also, and this is just the angst in me talking. I kind of want the dad to die. A lot of bad villains died, but none of the heroes died. No, we gotta mm -mm. I I I equivalent exchange, my guy. Okay. But with Pidge, I feel like she's all about finding her brother and her dad, and. It she's obviously focused on like, you know, multitasking with like Voltron and all that. And as like, she's going on these Voltron missions, she gets more like pieces of like finding out where her brother went and all that. At what point do we want her to be reunited with Matt? The thing is if we push back Matt, it might make finding their dad a little too quick after finding Matt, you know? Unless his dad is dead. <laughs> Ramel has basically nothing to do. She's a plot device to expose Lotor, and that's it. After that, she's useless. Dump her on a planet somewhere. Make her join the resistance or whatever. Make her use the abilities that, like, Allura doesn't. So, like, if Allura's doing all her freaking alchemy stuff, then, like, have Ramel be, like, the shapeshifter, like, who, like, is on reconnaissance missions and stuff. With the whole Adam thing, obviously it could have been done better. 
I will say though, I did appreciate when they said, oh, Shiro's gay. It wasn't like Shiro's our gay, gay. Like it just was Shiro. He just happened to be a queer character. You know what I mean? We know Shiro is like a compassionate, empathetic, strong leader who just happens to be queer. And I feel like that was good representation until they ruined it. But um, that I He's multidimensional. Yeah, yeah, he's the same space dad and everything. And he just happens to be queer. That was the only good thing that I, I appreciate from that. Everything else was just like, why did you hype this up? If it fell, why would you do that? You can't say Voltron without people cringing, just. Yeah, because it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare on both parties for like the both like the actual people, the showrunners, the producers, all the people who made the show, and for the fans because it was it was a toxic relationship. Oh my gosh! I literally at this point I've seen it all. I've seen it like if you live through the Voltron fandom through its prime, you deserve some kind of compensation. Oh my god! Call one eight hundred Koran the gorgeous man. <laughs> so you either act the Adam thing all together. Don't have him in there if you, if it's gonna be like that. Or you make him a more like integral character to the whole like earth part of what's going on. And oh. I wasn't fond of the earth part, but if they do earth, let's say maybe in the final season instead of like the final two seasons where like they're just goofing around like in that last season on earth, that was weird. Have him be a fully realized character and have some sort of stake and standing and like he's helping them out and he's part of the garrison and he's like on the council or something. Or maybe like even have him be like a mentor figure from the garrison, you know? Yeah, like if maybe they go- Maybe like when we open up, like he's one of the teachers or something. Like, so like we know him, but it's yeah, like later on, you know? Like, yeah, like at least we're like familiar with him and not like at mm -hmm. the end, it's just like, oh, this is a lot. You know what I mean? It was all planned out instead of flying up to see their pants in the writing room. Yeah, and if anything, because if he's still teaching at the, because the thing I didn't really get with the whole like first of all i hated the atlas thing i didn't really get i don't even remember what they were called the mnes or whatever it was it was crazy but like that group of kids i feel like maybe if anything he could like be their mentor you know what i mean like maybe they're the best of their group their class and if they're dealing with some sort of like galra infiltration this is the thing that they have. These are the kids who have to deal with it. If, if they if we want to keep in this like plot with Earth, because at this point when like everyone was introduced from the garrison, this is when there were too many characters. There were too many characters, too much going on. And a lot of it was just literally insane. It was, I, why? When I saw fan art and stuff of like all these new characters stuff, I didn't feel that spark of joy when I was looking at fan art for the core cast. Yeah, because we have no relation to them as a viewer. Like we don't- it's Like, oh, suddenly this whole new conflict with Earth and these new characters, this is Voltron question mark? Been, like introduced like maybe mid seat like mid series, not at the end, because at the end it's all coming together. Oh, yeah. Again, doing too much and then not doing enough at all. <laughs> okay, um, as a Clancer, I was totally, if they pulled Alerns off well, I would be totally fine with it. If they built up any relationship well and they fleshed it out and the buildup was satisfying and they had interactions to bolster it up, I would have been fine with it. But <sighs> came out of left field and no one asked for that. If we're gonna go for Alerns, for crying out loud, build up to it more throughout earlier seasons. Yes. Like Lance is flirting with Allura on and off like earlier and like she's blowing them off, but we don't see a lot of that in the middle seasons. Mm -hmm. Definitely have more interactions of Allura and Lance throughout, like have yes. the flirting like kind of on and off. And like, she's not like, oh my God, you're harassing me. And he's not like super overt, obviously. It's just like, yeah. kind of like playful, like teasing and flirting. And she's like, okay, Lance. Then Lotor happens and jealousy, jealousy, shit hits the fan and just have space between that whole altercation with Lotor. Have a whole space period where Lance is comforting Alora and yes. he's being there for her, being her friend, and he quits the flirting for once. Yes. <clears throat> and it's like serious. And it's during this when she's healing and he's there for her, where she's like, you know what? He's been there all along and he's comforting me now. Oh, shoot. Could I actually have feelings for him? Yes. Just don't make him a freaking rebound. Exactly, exactly. They don't date. They don't date until the, the last episode, the last scene in the last episode is them going on their first date. That's, that's freaking, if you wanted the Lords to be canon, that's how you should have done it. That's how you should have done it. That's how you should have done it. I don't freaking care. Yeah. I agree. If they want that, then they need to, there needs to be time. 
otherwise i'm like you know what let's make no romance it's all just best friends in space saving the world found family in space a bunch of you space kids i'm fine with that too space. i'm fine with that too and also it saves room for no drama don't really pass allura around like oh she's gonna with like keith or shiro or lance or Lo yeah, and that like, only no, added more to let the woman students. breathe literally like that did not help her at all they got too much stuff to deal with they ain't got time for romance there it is that's the plot <laughs> there we go that's it that's it they got like all this drama it's like bro i just want to go home and sleep i don't want to think about falling in love with my co-workers that sounds exhausting i mean granted if keith was my co-worker uh <laughs> hey -yo. Hey -yo. <laughs> i fall back into my voltron rabbit hole because of keith <laughs> This is my key thread. <laughs> nah, it's not happening anytime soon. I'm too whipped for Victor right now. <laughs> the show, the problem is it moved way too fast. The which pacing is like, was a nightmare. I Total don't know why, why, like, unless DreamWorks was like, you gotta wrap this in shop. It's like, bro. When we were writing this, we have the luxury of knowing what happens and like what like they inevitably did. And we don't have the constraints of like a company breathing down our neck and are saying, okay, you have this many episodes to do this. We have this many seasons. And then we also are only two people and we're not fighting over like what's going to happen plot wise. Even Ooh. then, I feel like that should be a, the first thing you think of. Because the thing with any any kind of media, any movie, any show, is that if the story, if the writing isn't good, everything else will fall flat. Like, I don't care if the visuals are great, if the character design is phenomenal, if the, the music score is just outstanding, if the story is not stable the rest does not matter because everything hinges on the story and the right there were so many great little like comedy and humor bits and they were like hearted and stuff but in later seasons they were put in really weird places so like you get the super serious episode and then all of a sudden they're playing D. &D. it's like yeah that huh? have it so like it's not gonna make you feel like not when things are going heavy right now i'm like going into depth about like Lance, I'm like, yeah, just you're gonna have so much fun editing this. Let's talk about like all of Team Voltron at the very end of the show. Are you happy where they ended up? No, what do you mean? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Girl, bye. Yeah. It's a lot because you got to take in consideration the what the Gaul is doing and then what Voltron is doing, and they're on two different like things. So, like, to keep and then that... Lotor, what, like, what do you want to do with the whole freaking quintessence or and all that? Yeah, like, maybe <laughs> he's trying to go back in time. <laughs> Or what if he's trying to get to an alternate universe? To, to like a world where he's accepted, bro. Cause that would tie into the multi-universe thing. That would make it a lot more compelling than Hagbar because we can see a lot more of Lotor and like yes. be able to like get a lot more integrated into the plot. He knows nothing about like his family cause his, all the Altaians are like wiped out, gone. Everything of them is just history. So like he's kind of grasping for scraps and Maybe he comes across freaking um, some like writing, maybe King Alfor's notes or whatever of like multiple universes. And maybe like chatting with Alora, he finds out that they accidentally stumbled upon a multiverse when they were just traveling through this like weird temporal anomaly or whatever. And so he's like, oh, interesting. And so he tries to manipulate them because his whole, if the theme we're going for is like family and longing for like a place where you belong, Lotor would fit in that category of like trying to like find a place where you belong. And if he's trying to find another world that he can like go to and will be accepted by, then I think that would like add to why he wants the quintessence so much because like he wants this desperately that he's willing to do anything to get it and since we as the audience we feel for lotor more more than we do with anerva slash hagar at the end of the season when she's trying to randomly be reunited with her family when like since you never you didn't you remember them five minutes ago what do you yeah, mean huh? my family no one can it would make a little bit more sense if like lotor had that need instead and yeah he made an effort and did all this stuff because then it would it would hurt us as the viewer more when it finds out that he's been like uh experiencing on actual Altaians or whatever and like using quintessence still to get to this new place or this new other reality that he's so even though like it's so twisted time. it's yes. so twisted because he wants to be like he wants to get in touch with the altan part of himself so badly and in the process is hurting other altan and like there's an altan in front of him that's saying 
you matter to me here please be with us we we will like ex- we will get to know you we would love to accept you and he's just like been so traumatized and like exposed and mentally corrupted or whatever that like he is convicted that this is what he needs to do to be happy and maybe that's why he flies into the rift and there's that fight in the rift and then both T and Voltron's like we gotta get out of here but Laura's like no without him and they grab him and I'm like ah and like she uses her space magic to like heal his mind and he comes to clarity and blah, blah, blah. I don't know but I think that would be good for him to want to get to that multiverse because then it makes more sense for the multiverse to be mentioned earlier if this is yeah. like a, a thing that can come from the quintessence, the capability to like travel beyond alternate universes and all that. The final fight is obviously with demon possessed Anerva. Is it on Earth? That make it really climactic. Like, oh my God, maybe she's doing something like she wants to suck the quintessence out of Earth or she's wanting to like, oh, she's using Lotor's technology or something to suck all the quintessence out of the humans. Yo, yo, because they thought, maybe they thought, oh, it's in the planet, but it's actually in the beings. There's more in the beings or whatever. Oh my gosh, there's gotta be a reason why she comes to Earth because like there's people everywhere, you know, in other planets or whatever. A vendetta against Voltron, she finds, she knows that they're from Earth or whatever and like they piss her off and like, oh, what better fitting way to like, and Voltron that like starting with your planet or whatever. Yeah, because if she has full like being possessing, it would be very spiteful to start at like their hub. And if they're there specifically, and then she comes out of nowhere, that's just like a whoosh, like and, blah. and then we have like the fight through the freaking multiverse and blah, 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 blah. Because after Lotor, they fight and then he's like, they don't know what happened to him, but he's not dead. He's just with team Voltron. She takes power of the Galra. Her next mission would be to carry on the quintessence sucking out. So if Voltron at this point, when that fight with Lotar was so taxing, like maybe it like drained the lions. That's been canonically. Did it? Okay, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So maybe they're like on the run, even though and they get they have to like deal with this whole like wanting to help but they can't or whatever. And like, oh, wait, 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 what if there's a rift on earth that they don't know of, but like Cause it would kind of, that would end it. What if, um, ooh, okay. My brain is like, just what if um, that fight with Lotor was in that rift at, that was located in Dibazol. And so like when they fought, it kind of closed it, but it actually opened up on earth or whatever. So now this is where all the energies come and it's like calling to the Galras, which are like millions and millions of light years away. So, it, the um, the way to like I guess charge the lions or whatever would be to get all the energy that they expended onto the rift and they're finding this now and they're just like uh Pidge we got something here that you might need to check out or whatever and that would then they have to go back to Earth and travel there and then there's bonding of like something's you know, like, coming oh, like something's coming gotta prepare and yeah 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 and then and th- this way Anerva has like reason to come to because there's the rift and there's like the big heavy load and like if she destroys Earth in the process of obtaining the quintessence from this rift, makes it more heavy as to why they need to defend Earth. That way, if they, when they get into the rift to defeat Anerva, Voltron will close it and then it ends and it's just done. Like it's the quintessence yeah. is sealed and it's back in the way that it was supposed to and that dark entity is just or something. There we go, ah. there we go, that's good, that's good. I like that. Okay. I like that. All right. You don't need a huge new slew of characters or the okay. character, the new, cast like your your self insert like they could be like just background characters that don't need like their whole like few episodes maybe they're just like classmates that they had that they knew yeah and now like yeah you guys left so now we're the best ha and uh yeah. they just, just helping of, out yeah they just support like background relief or whatever yeah we're not we are not putting atlas in our rewrite no like if she's being controlled by something that's like a, a parasite symbiote that like literally is just running on its code to consume and consume and consume then it's not like necessarily like an evil that like you can like convince or like talk no jitsu with yeah literally like this is like it's just it's just what it is like it's it it just consumes gold and that's what voltron has to sacrifice at the end to like quench this thing and actually overcome it and like um its hunger is what destroys it and their camaraderie their family is enough to like amplify the freaking oh my gosh we're too good it's power (laughs) friendship but it works yeah the world doesn't need voltron anymore we're gonna get on out of here and take the last bit of evil away with us. Yeah, literally, because full circle, it all comes, it's a circle life. After all that happens with Lotor and he wakes up and maybe 
he takes some time to heal and like the quintessence stuff like wears off or whatever or like he have to atone or whatever mm, that would be a good way for him and his generals to like rekindle because if he did portray them yeah. it'd be a good way for them to get back together for him to apologize for him to like want to atone for what he's done because it was wrong that would be a good way for them to go off and do their thing and then like there goes lotar he's living his best life he's he's recuperating ah, because he's a victim he's a he's a victim <laughs> Ooh, question though, because so after Lotor like becomes soup, does she end up running the Galra? Like she went to the colony of Altaeans and was like, my son Lotor like was your leader and now I am your leader too. And so she took control of the Altaeans and put them in like Evangelion suits. Cause he kills Zarkon. And if anything, cause then if he's put into rule, he's gonna like send Hagar on the run. So um, when all that stuff, all that stuff with him hits the fan, she's going to come back because there's going to be a, there's not going to be a power in there. So like if people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to be blah, blah, blah. She's like, nope, I'm done. You guys are useless. It's my turn now or something. I don't know. You look like you had an idea. No. Okay. So like when she's on the run and Lotor like takes the Galrin throne, like after the Kral's era and everything, that's when she finds the Altan colony. Yes. <gasps> And then when that power refuge happens, when Lotor, like, they don't know what happened to Lotor. They're like, well, someone has to rule. And they're doing a thing. And then she comes with her army of, like, Evangelion Altaeans and is like, I'm here. And I'm going to do the Galvin Empire. Oh, my gosh. That's, oh, that's awful. I love it. Oh. We're so evil. We're so awful. <laughs> oh, wait. How does it end? They sacrifice Voltron. Okay. And everything and then they go on with their lives keith can keep on working for the blade of mathematics <laughs> do do like his red cross charity work sort of stuff with them and like mm -hmm. do good in their own little covert ways Hidge and matt are doing their science shit maybe because like i know they jump like years into the future maybe like lance ends up being like a a teacher maybe or like maybe he like becomes a pilot and then like he works with some kids every now and then kind of like how shira was where like he went to like um the different schools to like intrigue them or like hey come to the garrison if you want to like you know be a space explorer or something like that yeah he falls yeah. into shira's voice oh my god oh my god it's a garrison trio too because like Hitch is stuck at the garrison right like doing her tech stuff mm -hmm. and then Hunk is off in space doing his intergalactic culinary stuff. Lance is like the bridge between them almost because he's yes! like doing pilot shit at the garrison, but at the same time he's still piloting around. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. That works. That works. Um oh, Alora's not dead. Um No, what could she do? What could she do? She's not dead. What if we build Altea? Are you kidding me? Like yeah. I think that's what they were trying to do at the end, anyways. But now she like is gonna be reunited with her people. And they're gonna start small. They found like a little, they, they they have a little planet or whatever, and they rebuild Altea, you know? The new Altea or whatever. Oh my God. Yeah, new Altea. And she gets packages from time to time with like all these Altean artifacts or whatever. And like, they're not- They're from them. Lotor! Lotor? Ah! minutes of us silently crying <laughs> over our head cannon <laughs> no this is good this is good honestly i think this works like it makes sense it has like an over like synopsis an overall synopsis plot of like what the end goal is it started here with the quintessence it ends here with the quintessence we have all this wibbly wobbly stuff in between i think that works did we do this it you're gonna do it. Oh my god. We're gonna take this out. We're gonna make it clean and pretty and we'll present it. Well, you're gonna do that. I'm, I'm gonna present here. it. <laughs>fun honestly and as much grief as we give voltron like you said we did gain a lot from it like we gained a lot of like i guess storytelling understanding and like things that we like and don't like we got some pretty sick characters for the most part at least character design wise um we got each other <laughs> we got youtube careers if you want to call it that i don't know <laughs> that's true if you want to blame like my entering the fandom like videos just 
this it started with Voltron. Yeah, literally. We took off with Voltron. So thanks. Question thanks. Mark, Voltron. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sorry it didn't end it on better terms, but that's not really my fault now, is it? The way that it happened sucked, but it happened and that's life. Life goes on like this again. <laughs> this was really good. This was honestly very therapeutic because like, if anything, I miss the characters. I really do. Like they were fun. It was a fun time as insane and ridiculous and questionable as it was i feel like it was a pretty solid time at least it was not my that point in my life was not as confusing as where i'm at now <laughs> no disrespect to the people who worked hard on it i'm sure oh, they, no. they did their very best we are just very bitter <laughs> so i am bitter. i don't know about coley she's a lot nicer than i am like, oh, well, it could have been better it sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's our dynamic that that's who we are <laughs> Good cop, bad cop, honestly. I hope I hope people who were in the Voltron fandom watching this feel a little bit better too. Cause I know a lot of people who were there at the time who still follow us or whatever. Kind of feel the same way. I know some newer fans that like are getting into Voltron who like watch it now don't really get the whole like Bleh! that came from it. Um, so if anything, if you were there, if you were there, just know that we're there with you. And I do apologize for the chaoticness of this video. Um, it's who we are. We can't, we, we can't see the are, chaos. This is how we are. Have you seen her editing? It's the funniest thing ever. Oh my gosh, I love it. Thank you so much, Nadia, for doing this with me. Thank you for having me. We could have done Even this though we didn't. <laughs> Literally, we had the opportunity to do it at my friggin' house, but <laughs> nope, we just wrote a friggin' BTS BJU instead and went to Disney. It, <laughs> it was important in the moment. Are you kidding me? So if you would like to check out more of Nadia's content, you can find it over here here okay. it'll there'll be somewhere. a plug or just ordinary grammar. it's somewhere there's i'm everywhere dude you can't escape me i you will you will run into me again whether you like it or not i'm sorry in advance but it's it, it is what it is <laughs> She's the moment. She's everywhere i am partake in your brain with memes. follow me on instagram yeah but thank you so much for watching old and new Viltron fans alike. And for those who had no idea what the chaos was about, uh, this is a little time capsule, I guess. We do hope that you do stick around, subscribe, like the video, do all that fun jazz. Make Karan Karan the gorgeous man proud of you, please. Yeah, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>